Hey, welcome back to part two. Just wanted to pick up where we left off with IDs, and then we'll finish up with some selectors for our list that we're working on. Let's say this, this list up here, let's say we wanted this red. Um, I could go here and give it an ID name. Now an ID is only meant to be used once. So I'm gonna do, I'll do space and I'll do uh, ID equals, and I'll call this red. OL ID equals red. And now to use an ID, you could go down here and you could do pound sign. That's how you specify an ID, and it's red. And I'll hit return here, and I'll just say color red, and I'll put a semicolon. And you can see what that does. Now, I could have done, you know, I could have done this. I could have done OL. I could have put OL in front of it, kind of the, kind of the first, the family name in front of it. I could have put the family name in front of it. So I could have put the OL, or I don't have to. It's kind of optional. Whatever helps you as far as your code. Sometimes when we do things for nav, we're going to want to keep that in front of it. But whether we did OL or not, because it's only meant to be used once, so there should only be one red ID on the page. So you don't have to have OL there, but sometimes in your code, you might have all the OL declarations together, and it might be helpful just to have the OL in front of it. So you don't need to have that, but ID should only be used once. So we, we shouldn't be giving anything else an ID of red. That should be the only one that has an ID of red on the page. So I just wanted to point that out. That's classes can be used multiple times. ID should only be used once. And you know, putting the, the family name in front of it is optional, especially if you're gonna use it more than once. Like classes, you don't want a family name in front of it. Okay, one more thing I just wanna point out, and I'm gonna get rid of these classes. I'm gonna get rid of this ID. I'll get rid of this right, well, I'll leave that in there right now. I'll leave in the ID right now, but what I want to get rid of is these classes here. I have the LI, the ULLI. Let me get rid of all these ones with green. I'll get rid of the green class right now, and I just want to show you another way to do this, and then I'll be done. Another way to do this if you wanted to target parts of this. Okay, so we already targeted all the list items. What if we want to target just one? What if we want to target smell of cut grass, and I already did that without doing a class? Because, you know, then you have to put all this stuff in here, and let me get rid of all this too. I'll get rid of this. I'll get rid of the span here and I'll get rid of the class because now we're putting a lot of extra stuff in our, the only thing at the highlights kind of hard to see here. We're putting a lot of extra stuff in our HTML and the whole idea is not, is to not really kind of mess up our HTML. Now, obviously we're going to have to put IDs and things like that occasionally, but for little stuff like that, is there a way I could target this without actually putting a class in here? And there is, I can actually do this. I can do, you know, UL, li because I am still targeting the one inside there so I still have to find it. it's still in that family I'm still targeting the child of ul so I'm going to put ul li and now I'm going to be more specific and what I'll do is I'll do something called I'll put a colon and it's called nth child it's nth dash child and then in parentheses you put what child is going to get that style so let's just say the second one because I'm going to count down one two and that's the second one and what I'll do is I'll put my brackets and I'll say color green and I'll put font weight bold and it targets that just by using nth child that's something you know and you may not have a reason to use that a lot but just be aware that you can target some of these things outside of actually always having to put a class in there or actually having to put stuff into the HTML I could say nth child they even have one called last child where I could target the last child and you know, I'll just copy this here and I'll, I'll make it something different. I'll go to, and it's called last child. Now I, I could change the, the numbers of any of these. I can make them one, two, three, four. That's how the nth child would work. Now let's say I just wanted to target the last one and they even have a way to do that, except it's a little different. I was confused the, the first time I, I thought it was nth child, then you put last in there, but it doesn't work like that. It actually is li colon and it's just called last child. It's just a special thing that's called last child and you can see it's doing that. So let's say I wanted to make this a different color. Let's say I want to make this purple. And I'll just type purple in there. Now it made it purple because I'm targeting the last child. I'm targeting the li that's in the family of ULs. So the child of ULs, which are only these. Now keep in mind, if you had multiple ULs on your page, if these are both ULs, you couldn't do that. You'd have to maybe give the UL an ID name. You could have to say this would be UL equals shows, and this might be a UL that's, you know, winter things or whatever it is. So you, you can target last child, you could target nth child. There's a lots of ways to do this, but what I wanted you to be familiar with 
is the idea of inheritance, where if you have a space, that means this is a child and that's the parent. And these could go further. You can have something inside, you know, these could go, you know, these don't just go two. It could be something inside of something inside of something. You could kind of dig in further. But just for now, we're just digging in from UL to LI. Okay? And keep in mind also that, you know, we have IDs here that use the pound sign. And that when you, when you do use a class name or ID, you could put the first name in front of it. This means basically that that's the family name. It's family with the, with that has an ID name of red because that's what we did up here. Unless I took that out. No, I still have it here. So that's the OL with the name of red. So when it has a name, you don't put a space. When it's a child that's kind of a child of a parent, then you do have to put a space. And the only other thing that, that you would sometimes use, we could use a comma so that you can you know put multiple things in there and I, and I, I won't I won't do that right now but you can you can do a if you use a comma it actually means that you can target multiple things so if you wanted to target you know everything like that if you wanted to do the nth child let's just let's just like copy this here let's say I wanted to you know put a comma and I want to say ol nth child and it made that green because now I'm saying, okay, make the nth child of the UL green and bold, and then make the nth child, the second nth child of the OL green and bold. And it did that. And by doing a comma, you could put multiple selectors for your CSS. But again, just want to point that out. I'll take that out right now. I don't need that in there right now. But just some, some concepts that I want you to get familiar with. And that's why this code pen is kind of a nice area to play in. Because, you know, you can't really screw anything up. I just want you to kind of play around and just get familiar with this. You know, even if you do what I did here and just make different line items, different colors and different weights, you know, just experiment a little just by targeting. And that it's a nice area to kind of do that. If you wanted to save this where this pen is, see this little pen here, just click on it and give it a name. And you're going to call it CSS. And you could call it, you could put dashes in here and you could call it intro and then just put a three on it because it's our third one. We just did, we just did one with a little list. This will be another one. Just call it CSS Intro Three. That's all you need to have on there. If you want to put lists on there, that's fine. But just leave it like this: CSS Intro Three, and it's going to be you. And notice when you create your account, you're going to have that username in there, and that'll be very easy for me to get to your account. I just have to go there, and I'll get to all your pens. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'll save this. I'll save the HTML from right now. All right, and what you'll need to do to send me the file once you're finished, because I still need to know where this is, I won't know just by you doing it. You'll have to send me this initially so I have your username. What you'll do first is you'll share this pen with me. And the way to do that, they do have a share thing down here. And if you go down here, you'll see it shares on Twitter and all these places, but it doesn't send me the URL. It sends it as a text message, and I don't, I don't want that. So what you can just do is just go up here to the URL and just copy it. And I'll have your username in there when you do that. So you'll just do a control C or command C and you'll copy that URL and you'll just go back to my Warren and you'll go to coursework and you'll just find the CSC intro three list assignment and just click on it, the link and where it says add comment, you could just click on add comment and you'll insert a link. This will be easier because then I'll have something to click on. Insert your link and just paste it here for URL. It'll put the same thing there. You don't need to change the text or anything. Just make sure it targets a new window and then hit OK. And if you want to make this a little bigger, you can. And you could put a 12 point and then you could save this. That way I could click on it. So that now I'll have a place to go and click and see your, your code pen area. And I could see all your pens once I just go into your username. So this doesn't even matter that much, but that's fine for now if you want to send that. So that's all you have to do for this assignment. And for anything in the future, I'll just go there and check it out. So that's all you have to do for this one. So that's the end of CSS Intro 3.